I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce. In this episode of Business Insight Fredericton, we'll be speaking to some newcomer business owners. Our first stop is SimpTech, a high-tech firm providing energy-saving solutions to both large and small customers locally and globally. We won this uh, technology Fast 50 by Deloitte. So tell me what SimpTech does. Uh, so what we do is we provide technologies, tools to enable them to act smarter when it comes up with energy efficiency. So would that be more for homeowners or more for businesses? Uh, to be honest, our focus is uh, business owners uh, because for, for a while, actually, top 20% of the business owners, like industry owners, big facilities, they have been getting a large amount of attention. Uh, but the rest of the 80% of the market, they didn't quite have good options to do what they should be doing, like what they want to do. Uh, so our focus is to the 80% of the SMEs. Um, uh, we also serve homeowners through utility as our channel. So what types <coughs> of solutions would you provide to SMEs to help them uh, manage their utility usage? So what we do is actually we provide our solution in a three-step process. Uh, it's measure, analyze, and act. Uh, so you cannot say what you cannot measure. Uh, so the very first step that we give it to you, tools necessary to acquire all your energy data from all across your portfolio into one single platform. But let's face it, just a dashboard itself is not going to help you save energy. So what we do, we have something called virtual energy advisory role. And the last phase, so once you have the data, you analyze it, then you act on it. When you have a client, uh, an SME, a small business <coughs> that's using your services, mm -hmm. What percentage might they expect to save in terms of their energy usage? That's a very good question. You'll be shocked to know the statistics. So average business owners, they waste 30 to 50% of the energy. So we target that 30 to 50%. Asif, tell me how you decided to start your business. This idea, SimTech, actually originated while I was in university. Um, uh, I have to say, like, you know, um, um, it has been always about customers. We were always looking for a problem that needs to be solved out there. Um, so I happened to have some amazing people like my co-founders like Kilan and Lionel and there was another individual. We called it as a project, university project. And we just started to do that. Like without knowing this is gonna be a business. So <coughs> when you were coming up with SimTech and mm -hmm. you were finishing school mm -hmm. and, and you were deciding that this is actually a business, okay. what organizations did you find to be helpful to you? NB Power is very innovative in, in their way of doing things in our community. Um, they have been helping since day one. We had like a UNB TME uh, led by Dr. Shukla, had been an amazing support. Uh, then after graduating that, when it became real, uh, we needed different kind of uh, support. Uh, so that kind of support we received from uh, Larry Shaw's uh, Plan Hatch um, and some of the other uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, support that we have here, like for example, uh, Propel ICT, um, and then there were different kind of programs in the region. Beyond that, when we started to actually service our customers and started to grow, uh, we have uh, Fredericton Chamber of Commerce giving us different kind of advices. So when <coughs> you were looking for that support and mm -hmm. when you were looking to get your business underway, mm -hmm. uh, was it challenging to find funding or were you able to bootstrap your business and, and fund it yourself? It was challenging, of course. I cannot just like deny those challenges, like long uh, up and down uh, kind of a ride. Uh, but one thing I do acknowledge is like it was always about creating the first trailer of the movie. So the business started with you and two co-founders. Yes. How many employees do you have now? Uh, so we currently we have uh, nine full time um, uh, altogether, and then we have altogether like you know different. Uh, consultants and part-times total 15 of the sim techers we call them. So you have a meter wired into the panel. Okay, so what's the power factor for CT7 and 8? Matt, tell me about your position here at SimTech. So I start as a manager, office manager slash project coordinator. So what I'll do is I'll work more or less with uh, the vice president in regards to our finances and our accounting. And I'll also help Asif and Keelan when it comes to project coordination for anything we have going on currently and previously. It's, uh, it's really fun, actually. It's um, a mixture of what I've done in school and a mixture of some project management. So what is your role within the business? I'm basically the customer uh, service manager, basically. I'm mm -hmm. the liaison between the client and the tech side of the, mm -hmm. the industry. So I'm the communicator between those two. Mm -hmm. And uh, I help organize, project manage. I also help uh, 
you know, coordinate all the electricians out to the sites. Uh, I actually call the, the customer all the time and, and I set that long-term relationship. So tell me about your immigration journey. I know that you came here as an international student. Mm -hmm. How did you end up starting a business? I didn't continue in my university, so I came with study permit. I uh, created the business and then came to a point where I have to either renew my study permit or uh, apply for a work permit or do something. Uh, so, but it was so much because here I'm running a business. Uh, there's so much going on, like, you know, government already invested in us. We have investors so talking, we have clients to uh, serve. Um, so uh, I didn't know what to do. Um, so again, uh, we have an amazing ecosystem to support those kind of uh, situations. Um, so uh, another thing about New Brunswick is, is you're just always one call away to whoever you need. Uh, but more importantly, what happened was uh, uh, I was blessed in during that time uh, is we have this startup visa program. Um, so it's an amazing program for entrepreneurs like us. Um, so what it did to me was like, you know, especially uh, at Planet Hatch, uh, they are the designated uh, institution to support entrepreneurs like us. Uh, so I went, reached out to Larry and his team and then asked him about my situation and then he said you know what like you know we're here to take care of you <laughs> i remember when that happened because yeah. um the fredericton chamber of commerce already knew you mm -hmm. you had joined the chamber yes. you and your partners were involved in our yes. uh in our chamber of commerce mm -hmm. and we were asked to write a letter of support for yes, that so we supported you with a letter and 100%. it felt so great to know that you got accepted in the program mm -hmm. the startup visa program and as you mentioned that's still a great program that's operating in fact um, this year, the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce made a resolution to the National Chamber to oh. advocate on behalf of that program mm. to make it work even more smoothly and even more quickly for newcomers who are coming here with great business ideas uh, that want to start a business in our community. We see that as a tremendous opportunity. I think so too. Yeah. I want to bring up something um, that is probably a little bit personal for you aside from your business. Um, another way that you and I have interacted is that we both uh, were involved in the strategic plan for immigration for the city of Fredericton and in fact you were the co-chair mm -hmm. of the city's immigration strategy. Tell me a little bit about that involvement that you had. I truly enjoyed that when I participated into this uh, policy development as a co-chair with Alex and uh, yourself with Larry and Lisa Bramford. I, I got to see that our community is um, putting together all the stakeholders into one single place and then saying, let's go create this. Were there any barriers that you think you faced that were unique to being a newcomer or do you think that the barriers that you might have encountered would be the same for any entrepreneur? I mean, um, you see, it, it's a unique journey for every individual, like mm -hmm. you know, how you take stress, how you take that journey of mm -hmm. growing a team. Uh, what you like, what you don't like, these are all unique to individual humans, mm -hmm. right? So on that perspective, uh, definitely it is unique, mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're common trends. So sometimes people give us advice in our entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. Some of it's good that we take, some of it not so good, but what is the best advice that you feel somebody has given you? I, I would say listening to the customers, mm -hmm. because I came from an engineering background, right? So and all our co-founders, we started in the engineering uh, faculty uh, right here at UNB. Uh, so um, I, uh, we realized that it doesn't matter how cool the technology is mm -hmm. uh, if nobody wants to adopt, right? So listen to your customers. Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, don't spend time thinking what you think is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, just build something simple, uh, what customer wants. So thinking about the future of your business, where do you see this business in 12 months, in three years, in five years? Uh, we're growing beyond Canadian market as well within the next 12 months, God willing. Uh, yeah, this is going to go to uh, different uh, parts of the U.S. and then we're also reaching out beyond North America. We return to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, your host. In this segment, we will meet Kin Hun. Kin is the owner of the UPS store, which provides packaging and shipping services, printing solutions, and mailbox services in the heart of Fredericton. Tell me, what is your background? What type of work did you do when you lived in Vietnam? Uh, most of my, my 20 years working time before I moved to Canada, so I worked for multinational companies. The last company I worked for before I moved to Canada was Nielsen and it's a market research company. I was okay. a head of their operation. 
you headed up the operations for Nielsen Market Research? Yeah. That's a big company. Yes. So when you moved to Fredericton, was your plan to start a business or did you think that you might get a job with a large company here? Uh, no, I didn't plan to get a job here. I plan to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and that's why I applied for the entrepreneur's uh, immigration mm -hmm. uh, into New Brunswick, Canada and I have planned it very well. So from the, the time that you applied until the time that you arrived in Fredericton, what time length was that? Uh, it took me almost three and a half years. Three and a half years? Yeah, a long journey. So what happened during that three and a half years? What processes were taking place? Okay, so first of all, I have to apply uh, to uh, New Brunswick. And then after that, I get nominated and I apply to CIC to get my visa and then landing to Canada. My business plan was to set up a new, uh, the UPS store. And then uh, at the time I arrived and then I, I know that the store was listed, so that's why. Mm -hmm. And then I just uh, approached the owner and then start the process from that. And how long did it take from the time you arrived until the time that you put on your, your UPS shirt and opened the doors? So I arrived in uh, July 2016. Right. And then from September 2016, I started the process. And until April the 1st, mm -hmm. so I incorporated my company and this store start from that. I just need to follow, you know, my plan. Okay. Yeah. So it really tells us how important it is to have a good business plan. Sure. Yeah. So uh, the I learned, you know, from my work that, you know, uh, plan your work and work your plan. That's very simple. <laughs> That's very good advice. Yeah. Tell us about the types of things you do here at the UPS store. What is your business all about? Okay, we talk about the UPS store. Mm -hmm. I believe that many people think that we just do shipping. We do offer many things here. First of all, we offer mailbox. So you could have a 24 by 7 access mailbox. And uh, we have printing. Mm -hmm. So we bring from business car okay. and to big poster to banners. We bring many things in. How many employees work here at the UPS store? Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, one full-time employee. My wife working here as a one full-time and uh, we have a, a part-time. I actually came to print off some resumes and I ended up uh, finding that as a prime opportunity to, uh, to apply. What are some of the unusual things that you might be asked to ship here? Uh, antiques, delicate antiques that are seemingly priceless. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of our most important jobs is to professionally pack these things so they get to their destination in one piece. Mm -hmm. You arrived in 2016. Yes. You uh, s opened the doors here at the UPS store in 2017. Yes. And in 2019, 19. you opened a second business in Moncton. Tell us about that. That's about another UPS store. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So I, I see opportunities, you know, in this business. So how do you find uh, having a business in two locations? Is that a challenge? Uh, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's really a challenge. So that's why I have to travel back and forth. Mm -hmm. However, I'm lucky to have good people over there to take in care of the, the store on daily basis. Mm -hmm. So they just need to call me. So you bought the business from the person who previously owned it. Did the employees of the business stay with you? Yeah, they stay with me. And I have one uh, new you know, staff over there as well. Ken, tell me, what goals do you have for your business? Growth. Growth? Yeah. Okay. So we mentioned that before, most of people uh, know the U.S. store for shipping. Right. And I want, you know, people know we do bring things as well and other businesses as well. So is the UPS store considered a franchise or? Yeah, the UPS store is a franchise. So I know there are hundreds of UPS franchise stores across the country. How is your store doing in comparison to some of the others? Uh, so it depends on you know, the location. Of course, you know, the store in, in the Toronto area, they may have more client base than us. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the store in Fredton were one of the best store in Atlantic. That's great. Yeah. If you had a crystal ball, where would you predict your business would be in five years? So I believe that the shipping is still there. People still want to send, you know, their parcel to everywhere. And it's people still want to receive their parcel. That's I believe. <laughs> and on the other hand, uh, I foresee you know, the printing business will uh, be growing as well. 
if I look at the economic of Britain, I see more people coming, more business open. So that is our business as well. What would you say are the challenges in the industry? And that could be the shipping industry, the printing industry. What, what would you say are challenges that you face within your industry? You know, I don't see any big challenge uh, within the industry because, you know, I'm running a franchise mm -hmm. and I got great support from the franchiser. Mm -hmm. And this, the challenge, if it, you know, there, it's just for, for me as a newcomer. Mm -hmm. So I have to get used to uh, the culture here. Mm -hmm. I have to get to know people here. So tell me what you think are the barriers that you faced as a newcomer starting a business here in Fredericton, in New Brunswick, in Canada. Yeah, starting a business, you know, is challenging everywhere. Correct. And starting a business in a country where you don't have any connection is m even more challenging. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any connection here. I don't know people here. I don't know the culture here. So I have to learn everything. I have to set up my new connection here. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you did or some of the connections that you made that were helpful, especially in the beginning? Oh, I'm lucky. So I, when I first landed to Britain, so I went directly to the Planet Touch. Okay. And then I joined a show called BIMP program, the Business Immigrant Mentorship Program. Right. And from that, I am able to build my connection. That's With wonderful. the help of you know, the program and the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce. How do you feel about the economy here in Fredericton, in New Brunswick, in Canada? Oh, uh, so we have a peaceful economy here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not, you know, I don't see a fierce competition happen here. Mm -hmm. So people just do, you know, their part of business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so that's why I love that atmosphere. If there were ways in which business organizations like the Chamber of Commerce or like government or even our community could help you uh, or help other newcomer entrepreneurs, what would be helpful? What would be more helpful to help you get that business going? Help us to connect to people. What is the best business advice you've ever received? People advise me, work hard. <laughs> work hard. <laughs> you know, there's a reason. So there's a difference between corporate life and entrepreneur. Yes. So uh, we, I have a job here. So being a CEO of a small business yourself mm -hmm. is not a chief executive officer. Instead, it's a chief everything officer. <laughs> you have to do everything. <laughs>
you know, help them and I would drive them around and show them, you know, other newcomers. When you come in from another country, real estate happens really much differently. This is an amazing view. It's the most beautiful view on the street. And it seems like um, having a law degree would help you because a lot of work in the real estate business is Absolutely. contractual arrangements and yeah. agreements and that sort of thing. Yeah, six foot three. Today we are um, two ladies in the property ladies and one man. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he's our contractor. He does, you know, all our, our own work that we mm -hmm. need to do, our signs, you know, he would go out and do um, little fixes. I saw that you closed today, so mm -hmm. that's good. So mm -hmm. Melissa and I, we, I think we, we've perfected mm -hmm. and continue to perfect every day like the whole process. So what goals have you set for your business? The goal is to, to keep building on, we're building a strong foundation. We, we're doing really great business together. And yes, I'm certainly looking at adding people to the team. Mm -hmm. um, but it could be provincially, mm -hmm. because we hold a provincial license. So have you found it easy or difficult to integrate into the business community here in Fredericton? Um, it's, it's, it takes time. So yeah. were there organizations or groups or uh, associations that you got involved with early on that were helpful to you? Early on, I think... Obviously, as a real estate agent, you know, you get involved in the, in the real estate association. You, you grow into those positions. You just got to, you know, mm -hmm. just got to do it. Mm -hmm. What types of barriers exist for newcomers starting a business here in New Brunswick? Um, yes, it um, may just take that extra mile or that extra mm -hmm. time yeah, that you have to invest. And what about cultural barriers? Have you found that there are any cultural barriers that you've had to overcome? I think, you know, coming from Western Europe, from Belgium, it's probably less than some other cultures, mm -hmm. but um, there always are things, you know, there are different accents on holidays or things we don't do here that, you know, mm -hmm. so there's always changes mm -hmm. for sure. You've mentioned that you've gotten involved with the Real Estate Association. Have you done other work uh, in getting involved in the community? So I'm doing the, both the local and the provincial real estate association at different levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm, my community work is my newcomer work. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that's mm -hmm. m almost half a day a week. When you think about the industry that you're in, what are the challenges that you face in this industry? The, the biggest challenge is it's a self, you're self-employed. You are, um, we are no cure, no pay. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it it really needs, you need to work all the time. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you get busy with a couple of transactions that are, you know, in, mm -hmm. the, in the phase of getting, you know, the conditions removed. If you stop lead generation mm -hmm. during that time, you know, you're going to have a dip mm -hmm. three months later. So we really have to balance the actual work that, you know, once a transaction comes in. And I couldn't do that without Melissa because mm -hmm. she takes a lot of that back mm -hmm. work while I still have to go out and, you know, be in the community. Tell me how you feel about the economy of New Brunswick right now. How are you feeling about what's happening in our economy? Is it positive? It's very positive and, and it's very exciting. If you had a crystal ball, what would you say the future looks like for the property ladies, maybe in five years? I think we're gonna keep growing our, you know, the, the system we have built to make it perfect yeah. those transactions and grow the team as well. We're always looking for great companies with a unique story to feature on the show. If you have suggestions, please get in touch with us.